I do enjoy my cricket, play it a little bit. Um, um, not to any <laughs> any great standard or degree, but it's really shocking to hear what we've heard this morning. When were you growing up? Did you, in, in terms of you, you sh- sport growing up, mm. did you find you weren't allowed or you didn't get any access because you're a wee girl? Yeah, I think I think a lot of times, my generation as well, so I'm 35, so I think there's probably a lot of um, girls that are listening now, women that are listening who wouldn't have had access, for example, for football at school. So we, we just, there just wasn't yeah. a girls' football team. And generally, um, if you were a girl, you'd play netball, you'd play hockey, and if you're a boy, you'd play football, you'd play rugby. My mum actually um, took me separately, me and my brothers, to a um, rugby club And we all played and she actually became a coach and then she also became a referee. Mm -hmm. I remember clear as day, I'd finish my um, classes, I'd finish my um, training sessions and I'd go and watch hers. She had the slightly younger generation. And um, she, when she was refereeing, that was very difficult for a woman to be refereeing because she would get all sorts. Anyone who's a referee, we talk about a lot on this show, don't we? Anyone who's a referee knows the amount of abuse you get from the um, from the touchline, from the fathers, from the mm. mothers, from the people that are watching um, their kids. It can be a really like it could be quite a, a hard place, can't it? So I remember her being um, specifically picked on for being a woman, for being a referee. Um, luckily, my mum is is pretty robust, and it didn't put her off. But I don't think she enjoyed that very much and I don't think she refereed for very much longer either. But in terms of when I hear things like this, what I think about is if something is there, you just said that, Ali, you just said about watching women's cricket. If something is there, you'll watch it, right? If you like sport, if you really like sport, you'll flip something on, you'll probably end up watching it. You know, I I, I remember working on um, ping pong, the world championships of ping pong. And after I'd worked on it for one day, I was no expert. I did all the research I needed to do. But, but we all were not experts at all and we, were, we weren't shy about saying that. Why would you be? It's a very niche sport as well. So because we hadn't watched it before, we did all the research, we got so absorbed in it, right? So I just, I really believe if you really love sport, if something is on there, whether it is men, women's, anything, the colour of your skin, whatever, I think you were just absorbed in the sport. Of course you would. I also think that's the same thing. If it's accessible, you will go and play it. To make these things more yeah. accessible. See that, that that's the interesting thing for me, where I, I, I'm I'm not qualified to give you a, a, a really qualified opinion on it, but it has to be accessed. I, the biggest problem must be access to the sport. Doesn't matter who you are, boy, girl, or colour, race you are. Cost as well would clearly be a major factor in it. Major factor in it. But I'm, my point my point with the girls just now, and tell me if I'm wrong. Mm. Now, clearly it's not perfect. Clearly there's massive room for improvement. But surely it's better than it's been. And I'm just thinking, I'm I'm, I'm thinking about women's golf, I'm thinking about women's Mm. rugby, I'm thinking about women's cricket. I'm just telling you I'm watching it and I'm enjoying it. Women's boxing. Surely we're heading in the right direction. I hope so. It's there. So so as in, in coverage is better. But I think if you delve behind the scenes and you look at support, you look at finances, you look at pay, things like that, um, also the kind of level of competition I think all that has a very long way to go as well which obviously it needs support a chicken and egg kind of argument yeah. I always think with yeah. these sort of things what what comes first do you push the popularity or do you push the support I, I don't know enough well, about was, it behind the scenes to know what does come first I think it's organic I think it has to be grown it has to be helped that was a brilliant discussion that I had yesterday with the girls believe it or not I was with Shaban. Uh, and Lucy Warren and Eliko, and we were talking about the pros and cons of the Women's World Cup being in Australia. In Australia. Mm. And Annie's coming on, and I'm going to ask her again what her views are, because there were pros and cons, because the general consensus of opinion would be that it would be more beneficial to have it in Europe <laughs> in terms of viewing figures. However, if it is a World Cup and it's a growing tournament within women's sport, I get the idea of taking it to a country like Australia mm-hmm. where you are going to have eight more countries this year in the, in the tournament than before. Countries that haven't been there before, whether it's Haiti, mm-hmm. Philippines, Zambia, Australia itself. All these countries are new to it. So that in itself would be expanding the sport. But they reckon it might have been even better if they had they kept it in, within Europe well, in terms of viewing figures. Whose responsibility is it to grow a sport? I suppose that's the, the question that you ask first and foremost. And, and is it FIFA? So should FIFA be making it more accessible by 
putting it in a country like Australia where more people can watch it? Should FIFA be thinking about how much they charge for television rights of for course. European countries? Of course. Because then if you put the Women's World Cup on in this country, which is what's happening at a time where people aren't awake yet because it's in Australia, you're going to get less viewing figures. You're going to get I, less I get sponsors it. and, I get and it. Um, less commercial um, revenue for that kind of That's, thing. That, that, that so it's, in, a, it's an interesting argument, Ali. And that goes into the same argument with equal pay. Mm. I'm not just talking about equal pay between men and women. It doesn't matter who you are or what the sport is. If, if, if demand is great... Then it, 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 it goes to figure that that, that you're, the the sports people will receive more money mm -hmm. if the demand to watch that sport is greater. Exactly, and then I mean this is an even bigger argument that you can get into because you have to say, okay, well, fine, is the demand not there because it's not yeah. getting enough publicity, or is it not there in general? In which case, if I'm an investor and I go, well, I'm not going to put a lot of money into that because I'm not going to get a lot of money back out of it. It's 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 a really it's a really intricate and there's detailed a, argument. There's so many pros and cons because mm. Infantino's come out and said, to be fair to him, and he's one man that receives a lot of criticism, mm -hmm. and the vast majority justifiable. He's come out and said that Australia. I think the opening game there's a chance of being over ninety thousand Australia versus Ireland, and they're well on their way to being the biggest and best watched live sport ever for women in any tournament globally. Globally. So that's his argument, and it's a, mm. it's a strong one. But Infant, if, I mean, I'll probably get myself fired, actually, if I go into a conversation about Gianni Infantino. You, no, no, well, I'm, I'm going tomorrow you. anyway. Shall yeah, I just do it? I'm with you. You can't fire me yeah. when I'm leaving already. Anyway, um, I want to speak to people about this because what we're talking about here with the ECB and what's going on is um, it runs very deep in cricket. It's not just, we're not talking about people watching, we're talking about people trying to participate and why you feel it's not accessible anymore or in general, was it ever mm -hmm. accessible? Matt has given us a call. Hello, Matt. Morning, Matt. Morning, guys. How are you doing? We're Good doing well, thank thanks. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. What have you got to say, my friend? Um, well, it's, again, on the lines of the cricket, um, I've got a, a, a neighbour of mine whose daughter is very, very good at cricket and um, she invited us down with my daughter, who was obviously friends. Um, we're not a cricket family at all. Not Never really been that interested in it, but we've been told it's very sociable. Come down on a Friday, have a look. So we went. So we went down. Um, and it was. My daughter got involved with the cricket with her friend. Um, and it was very sociable, very nice. few beers, really enjoying it. Where I live in Surrey, there's quite a lot of private schools. So we were just chatting away to all the other parents, thinking we were getting on really well, thinking it was quite nice. And halfway through the conversation, one of the parents just brought up, where does my daughter go to school? My daughter goes to the local comprehensive. And when I told them that, the response was, isn't it great that this club lets in common kids from common schools? And I, I looked at the people in the group and... I actually said to him, excuse me, could you explain what you just said? And they said, well, you know, you'd have to go in not to one of the private schools, but to the local comprehensive. And I said, excuse, I, I couldn't believe what they actually said. Mm. So I looked at my wife, I looked at my neighbour, and with that, me and my wife decided to leave. I grabbed my daughter, who was, didn't want to leave, but I just felt, this is, this is wrong, this is not right. So I grabbed my daughter, and, and we left. And um, I spoke to my neighbour about it, Afterwards, she's apologised and said, look, this is just what... She actually said, this is just what the cricket is like. We're, from, we're, we're quite a big football family. Both my daughters play football for local teams. And we've never experienced anything like that before due to the fact of where my daughter goes to school. I could not believe. And the group that we were in looked at me as if it was just common language, as if they hadn't said anything out of order. Mm. I was just really, really surprised this day and age how much girls' sports coming up, that they had these people that still had this mentality. They'd been nice as pie up until then, and I just thought... And they weren't nasty afterwards. It was just the way that they used it as if it was just common language. And I just thought, do you know what? We won't be going back. For us, the cricket's done, as far as I'm concerned. It well, purely Matt. hit a note when you brought that conversation up today about elitism and, and the social barriers. It, couldn't believe it. I really could not believe it. Matt, I really hope that you, you that you can find somewhere to take um, your daughter that doesn't have that kind of attitude. But I think you're right. I think this is exactly what we're talking about. 
is how do you change that attitude? How do you change elitism? We're not just talking about elitism, we're also talking about sexism, we're also talking about racism. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.